Odinani, Igbo, D. Nan, comprises the traditional religious practices and cultural beliefs of the Igbo people of southern Nigeria. Odinani has monotheistic and panentheistic attributes, having a single god as the source of all things. Although a pantheon of spirits exists, these are lesser spirits prevalent in Odinani expressly serving as elements of Chinaka or Chuku, the supreme being or high god. Chinaka is a compound word encompassing the concept of chi as the creator na is a verb meaning that while aki means create. Chinaka therefore means the creator or the god that created all things. The concept of chuku supreme chi was largely propagated by the Aro Igbo of Arachuku in eastern Igboland who wielded much spiritual force over the eastern Niger Delta in the 18th century due to their operating of the Abini Ukpabi oracle. Lesser spirits known as Orbara or Orlushi operate below the high god Chinaka and are parts of him divided by gender in his mind. These spirits represent natural forces, Agbara as a divine force manifests as separate Alusi in the Igbo pantheon. A concept of the Eye of Sun or God exists as a feminine solar deity which forms a part of the solar veneration among the Nri Igbo in northern Igboland. Alusi are mediated by Dibia and other priests who do not contact the high god directly. Through Orva, divination, the laws and demands of the Alusi are communicated to the living. Alusi are venerated in community shrines around roadsides and forests while smaller shrines are located in the household for ancestral veneration. Deceased ancestors live in the spirit world where they can be contacted. Below the Alusi are minor and more general spirits known as Muo loosely defined by their perceived malevolent or benign natures. These minor spirits are not venerated and are sometimes considered the lost souls of the dead. The number of people practicing Igbo religion decreased drastically in the 20th century with the influx of Christian missionaries under the auspices of the British colonial government of Nigeria. In some cases Igbo traditional religion was syncretized with Christianity, but in many cases indigenous rites were demonized by Christian missionaries who pointed out the practice of human sacrifice and some other cultural practices that were illegal under the colonial government. Earlier missionaries referred to many indigenous religious practices as juju. Igbo religion is most present today in harvest ceremonies such as New Yam Festival and masquerading traditions such as MMANWU and Ekpe. Remnants of Igbo religious rites spread among African descendants in the Caribbean and North America in era of the Atlantic slave trade. Igbo B.A. Grave was transferred to the former British Caribbean and Guyana as Obia and aspects of Igbo masquerading traditions can be found among the festivals of the Garifuna people and Jonkonu of the British Caribbean and North Carolina. Etymology <inaudible> 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 Odinani in northern Igbo dialects is the compound of the words d located plus n na within plus an the one god consisting of anu e -nu above the heavens and ana below the earth. Other dialectal variants include Odinala, Odinana, Omanala, Omanana, and Omanani. The word Odinani in all its variations is also associated with the culture and customary laws of the Igbo people. Many of the laws and culture were counterparts with religions such as taboos and laws concerning sacred spaces like a deity's sacred forest. Since customary law is recognized in Nigeria, many in Igbo society find themselves syncretizing these beliefs with other beliefs and religions. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Beliefs. Odinani could loosely be described as a monotheistic and panentheistic faith with a strong central spiritual force at its head from which all things are believed to spring, however, the contextual diversity of the system may encompass theistic perspectives that derive from a variety of beliefs held within the religion. Chukwu as the central deity is classed among the Ndimmuo, invisible beings, an ontological category of beings which includes Ayla the divine feminine earth force, Chi the personal deity, Indichi the ancestors, and Mmuo the minor spirits. The other ontological category consists of Ndimmadu, visible beings, which include Orn animals, Osishi plants, and the final class Uro which consists of elements, minerals and inanimate beings. Chukwu as the creator of everything visible and invisible and the source of lesser divinities is also referred to as Chinaka. Chukwu is genderless and is reached through various spiritual forces mainly under the spirit class of Alusi who are incarnations of the High God. No sacrifices, however, are given to Chukwu and no shrines and altars are erected for him. If an Arushi is assigned to an individual, it becomes a Chi, a personal guardian god. 
The chi manifests as MMUO, spirits, and as a person's spirit is earthbound it chooses sex, type, and lifespan before incarnation in the human world. Chi Chi is the personal spirit of a person MMU acute, in Igbo culture it is this spirit which determines destiny. Hence the saying, Onye Kwe, Chi Yar Ekwe. If a person agrees to a thing, his spirit agrees also. Culturally, people are seen as the creators or makers of their own destiny. The breath of life is in the heart, Obi. Chi refers to the light and the day in contrast to the dark. The universal chi indirectly in charge of everything is Chuku who is the supreme being that is beyond the limits of time and space. Chuku's name is a compound of the words chi plus uku great in size, supreme. Chi is believed to be a spiritual connection between an individual and the high god and it dictates the trajectory of a person's spiritual journey on earth. Each chi is personal and is in communion with and inseparable from the universal chi of all things. The high god, Chuku, is believed to assign chi before and at the time of an individual's birth. It is a guardian spirit providing care, guardianship, and providence. In this respect, the concept of chi is analogous to the concept of a guardian angel in Christianity, the demon in ancient Greek religion, and the genius in ancient Roman religion. Unlike Chuku, who is genderless, chi can be masculine. A dibia can identify a person's chi through divination and advise adherents of ways to placate it. Chuku is also referred to as Chinaka which is a compound of the words Chi the divine masculine force and Aki the creative and divisive feminine force. Ik came out of the hands of Chi but are considered one, Chi created the world while Ik divided it incorporating a divisive trickster energy that introduced death and suffering. Chinaka is also interpreted as Chi Nek, Chi the creatrix, and Chi Nneaa, Chi the creative mother. Ik is one's ancestral guardian spirit. Chinaka or Chuku is high up away at the periphery of human life and remains a mystery to the people. Households usually contain a chi shrine which could be focused on a tree. In marriage a woman takes her chi shrine along with all her belongings to her matrimonial home. Around Ankara here, in southern Igboland, there are the most elaborate chi shrines which are decorated with colorful china plates inset into the clay walls of the chi shrine building. The altars hold sacred emblems, while the polished mud benches hold offerings of china, glass, manilas, and food. As a marker of personal fortune or misfortune, good acts or ill, chi can be described as a focal point for personal religion. Topic. Cosmology The community of visible interacting beings and the cosmos is referred to as Wa, which includes all living things ENDID end, including animals and vegetation and their mineral elements which possess a vital force and are regarded as counterparts to invisible forces in the spirit world. These living things and geomorphological features of the world therefore possess a guardian deity. Igbo cosmology presents a balance between the feminine and masculine, perhaps, with a preponderance of female representation in Igbo law. In Igbo cosmology, the world was divided into four corners by the high god corresponding to Ekaori Afink W which are the days of the week in the Igbo calendar regarded as market days. The universe is regarded as a composite of bounded spaces in an overlapping hemispherical structure, the total spaces are referred to as Elu Narela. In one Igbo cosmological theory reported by W.R.G. Morton in the 1950s from an elder in Abagwa Nike in northern Igboland, Chuku sees that the sun travels across the world in the daytime and then cuts into two in order for the moon to pass on a perpendicular route, and so the world is divided into four parts and four days. The quarterly division of the earth and the days makes the number four sacred ends to the Igbo. The Elu Narela space is defined by two boundaries, Elu Ie, sky's limit, composed of heavenly bodies under the main forces of the masculine sun and feminine moon, and Elu Ela, earth or land's limit, consisting of the four material elements of fire and air masculine, and earth and water feminine. The pattern of two and four reoccur in Chuku's creations. The days correspond to the four cardinal points and are its names in Igbo, Eke East, Ori West, Af North, Ink W South. The NRI Igbo claim the market days to have been introduced to the Igbo by the divine progenitor and king Eri in the 9th century after encountering the days as deities. These Elusi are venerated as the primary or as a major deity under Chinaka in parts of Igboland. 
In terms of hierarchy, some communities recognize Eke as the head of these Eleusi, while others prioritize Ori and Ink W first after the High God. Market days may have local deities representing the spirits in some places. In many southern Igbo towns, Agwu is the patron of Ik, Ogwagu the patron of Ori, Amadioha the patron of Afo, and Ayla for Inkwo. Justice Ofo and Ogu is a law of retributive justice. It vindicates anyone that is wrongly accused of a crime as long as the hands are clean. It is only a person who is on the righteous side of Ogu na Ofo that can call its name in prayer, otherwise such a person will face the wrath of Amadioha, the god of thunder and lightning. Kola nut is used in ceremonies on Achuku, Chi, Arushi and ancestors and is used as a method of professing innocence when coupled with libations. The Igbo often make clay altars and shrines of their deities which are sometimes anthropomorphic, the most popular example being the wooden statues of Akenga. Typically, only men are allowed to make representational figures of supernatural forces. Topic. Reincarnation. The Igbo have traditionally believed in reincarnation, Ilo Uwa. People are believed to reincarnate into families that they were part of while alive. People can usually reincarnate seven times, giving seven opportunities to enter the spirit world successfully as an ancestor. The person's cycle number on earth is unknown to them. Unlike in Hinduism, humans can only reincarnate as humans. Families hire fortune tellers to reveal the ancestral identity of the child in their former life. The baby is sometimes named after this relative. The personality of the ancestor is not identical to the child's but rather the concept establishes a vital relationship with the child and characteristics of the ancestor. Before a relative dies, it is said that the soon-to-be deceased relative sometimes give clues of who they will reincarnate as in the family. Once a child is born, he or she is believed to give signs of who they have reincarnated from. This can be through behavior, physical traits and statements by the child. A diviner can help in detecting who the child has reincarnated from. It is considered an insult if a male is said to have reincarnated as a female. An ancestor may reincarnate as multiple people in which case share a mortal bond. Upon the death of one person, it is believed that the others may die a sudden death if they see the corpse. Topic. Ogbanje An Ogbanje is a reincarnating evil spirit that would deliberately plague a family with misfortune. In folklore, the Ogbanje upon being born by the mother, under a certain amount of time, usually before puberty, would deliberately die and then come back and repeat the cycle, causing the family grief. This time period varies between minutes, hours, days and years. Female circumcision was sometimes thought to get rid of the evil spirit, whereas finding the evil spirit's IYIUWA, which they have dug somewhere secret, would ensure the Ogbanje would never plague the family with misfortune again. The IYIUWA is a stone that the Ogbanje's way of coming back to the world and also a way of finding its targeted family. The stone is deep enough to not have been planted physically by a child. The IYIUWA is dug out by a priest and destroyed. Furthermore, female Ogbanje die during pregnancies along with the baby, male Ogbanje die before the birth of a wife's baby or the baby dies. The child is confirmed to no longer be an Ogbanje after the destruction of the stone or after they successfully give birth to another baby. Topic. Deities Chukus incarnations and ministers in the world wa are the Alusi, supernatural forces that regulate human life. In southern Igbo dialects especially, Orbara is the term for these forces. The Alusi are regarded as channels to Chuku. The Alusi, who are also known as Arushi, Anusi, or Arusi in differing dialects all spring from Ela the earth spirit who embodies the workings of the world. There are lesser Alusi in Odinani, each of whom are responsible for a specific aspect of nature or abstract concept. According to Igbo belief, these lesser Elusi, as elements of Chuku, have their own specific purpose. Elusi manifest in natural elements and their shrines are usually found in forests in which they are based around specific trees. At shrines, ihu mmu acute, an object such as a hung piece of cloth or a group of statues are placed at an Elusi's group of trees to focus worship. 
Deities are described as hot and often capricious so that much of the public approach shrines cautiously and are advised to avoid them at most times. Priests are entrusted in the maintenance of most shrines. Many of these shrines are by the roadside in rural areas. Tender palm fronds symbolize spiritual power and are objects of sacralization. Shrines are cordoned off with omu to caution the public of the deity's presence. Larger clay modelings in honor of an Alusi also exist around forests and rivers. Other Alusi figures may be found in and around people's homes and the shrines of Dibia. Much of these are related to personal chi, cults, and ancestral worship. Topic: Ayla. Ayla, meaning earth and land in Igbo, also or Anna, is the feminine earth spirit who is responsible for morality, fertility, and the dead ancestors who are stored in the underworld in her womb. Ayla is at the head of the Igbo pantheon, maintaining order and carrying out justice against wrongdoers. Ayla is the most prominent and worshipped Alusi. Almost every Igbo village has a shrine dedicated to her called Ihu Ayla where major decisions are taken. Ayla is believed to be involved in all aspects of human affairs including festivals and at offerings. Ayla stands for fertility and things that generate life including water, stone and vegetation, color agua, beauty more, which is connected to goodness in Igbo society, and uniqueness orva. She's a symbol of morality who sanctioned Ominala Igbo customs from which these moral and ethical behaviors are upheld in Igbo society. Ayla is the ground itself, and for this reason taboos and crimes are known as ends Ayla, desecration of Ayla, all land is holy as the embodiment of Ayla making her the principal legal sanctioning authority. Prohibitions include murder, suicide, theft, incest, and abnormalities of birth such as in many places the birth of twins and the killing and eating of pregnant animals. If a slaughtered animal is found to be pregnant sacrifices are made to Ayla and the fetus is buried. People who commit suicides are not buried in the ground or given burial rites but cast away in order not to further offend and pollute the land, their ability to become ancestors is therefore nullified. When an individual dies a bad death in the society, such as from the effects of divine retributive justice or breaking a taboo, they are not buried in the earth, but are discarded in a forest so as not to offend Ayla. As in cases of most Alusi, Ayla has the ability to be malevolent if perceived to be offended and can cause harm against those who offend her. Within the Earth's spherical limit, in a cosmological sense, is a designation of the Earth's bosom within, Ime Ayla, a hemispherical base to the Earth with an opening or mouth at its highest point, on Ayla. This is composed of mainly deep dark sea water Ohamiri. Ime Ayla is considered as the underworld. Ayla in addition to embodying nature, is the cosmic base on which the vault of heaven, Ea, rests. As the foundation of all existence, children's umbilical cords are saved and symbolically buried under a tree to mark the child's first sharing of family-owned lands. This tree could either be an oil palm, bread fruit tree, raffia palm, or plantain tree depending on the cultural region. In some places, such as NRI, the royal python, Aa, is considered a sacred and tame agent of Ayla and a harbinger of good fortune when found in a home. The python is referred to as nne mother in areas where the python is revered, it is a symbol of female beauty and gentleness. Killing of the python is expressly forbidden in these places and sanctions are taken against the killer including the funding of expensive human-sized burials that are given to slain pythons. Amadioha <inaudible> <inaudible> Amadioha from Orvadi plus ha, free will of the people in Igbo is the Alusi of justice, thunder, lightning and the sky. He is referred to as Amadioha in southern Igboland, Kamalu, Kamanu, Kalu among the Aro and other cross-river Igbo people, Igwe among the Isuama Igbo and in northwestern Igboland, and Ofufe in certain parts of Igboland. His governing planet is the sun. His color is red, and his symbol is a white ram. Metaphysically, Amadioha represents the collective will of the people and he is often associated with Anyanwu. He is the expression of divine justice and wrath against taboos and crimes, in oaths he is sworn by and strikes down those who swear falsely with thunder and lightning. Amadioha shrines exist around Igboland, his main shrine is located at Azuzu in the River Inigbo region in Northern Rivers State. While Anyanwu is more prominent in Northern Igboland, Amadioha is more prominent in the South. His day is Afo, which is the second market day. In Mbari houses Amadioha is depicted beside Ayla as her consort. Akenga 
A kenga literally, place of strength, is an Alusi and occult figure of the right hand and success found among the northern Igbo people. He is an icon of meditation exclusive to men and owners of the sculpture dedicate and refer to it as the right hand which is considered instrumental to personal power and success. A kenga is a source of encoded knowledge unraveled through psychological principles. The image of a kenga comprises someone's chi, personal god, his indichi, ancestors, aka a kenga, right hand, ike, power, as well as spiritual activation through prayer and sacrifice. Igbo culture's value of resourcefulness and individualism in society utilizes the concept of a kenga to regulate the relationship between individuality and family relations and obligations, as well as free will and industriousness balanced with destiny decided person's chi. A kenga acts as a physical medium to the consciousness and emphasizes individual initiative through reflection and meditation. Success validates the akenga and the sculptures act as visual representation of a person's inner success. People give offerings in thanks to the akenga after providing energy to overcome any unwanted pre life choices. These choices are at the hands of the person's earthbound spirit, MMUO, who chooses sex, type, and lifespan before incarnation. The successful akenga influenced the saying of well being, akengam kwt tata, meaning that my akenga stands upright today. During festivals of Ogbalido or Alili Akenga, Feast of Akenga sculptures of him may be paraded around a village or displayed at the village center if too monumental to transport. When a person does not become successful with hard work the Akenga has fallen and is seen as a sign of danger, if meditation and cajoling the Akenga fails, the sculpture is thrown down and broken which spiritually kills the Akenga, a new one is carved to replace it. Akenga figures are common cultural artifacts ranging from 6 inches to 6 feet high and can be humanistic or highly stylized. There are anthropomorphic, architectonic, and abstract cylindrical Akenga sculptures. Akenga is a symbol of success and personal achievement. A kenga is mostly maintained, kept or owned by men and occasionally by women of high reputation and integrity in the society. At burials, a man's a kenga is broken into two with one piece buried with him and the other destroyed. <laughs> Akwensu This Alusi was adept at bargains and trade, and praying to Akwensu was said to guarantee victory in negotiations. As a force of change and chaos, Akwensu also represented the spirit of war among the Igbo, invoked during times of conflict and banished during peacetime to avoid his influences inciting bloodshed in the community. Warriors set up shrines to Akwensu to help war efforts. This is based upon the finding of old shrines dedicated to the worship of the spirit as well as the recounting of old oral stories which depict the character of Akwensu. Akwensu was a bringer of violence and possessed people with anger. Akwensu holds the propensity of bringing misfortune and is regarded as an evil spirit in this sense. Among the Christian Igbo Akwensu is representative of Satan and is seen as a force which places itself opposite to that of Chuku. Akwensu festivals are held in some Igbo towns where military success is celebrated and wealth is flaunted. Topic. MMUO and minor forces MMUO is a broad class of minor spirits or divinities manifesting in natural elements under the class of elder divinities with major cults. Feminine MMUO inhabit earth and water and masculine MMUO inhabit fire and air. This class can be broken down by the Alusi, serviceable MMUO, AGWU are related to unusual and deranged human behaviors, these spirits interact with human in a capricious nature that often makes them dangerous. Other cult deities exist around Igboland such as Njoku-ji, Yam and Fire deity overseeing agriculture, Idamili, the Pillar of Water, the female Alusi based in Idamili North and South who holds up the waters, and M.K. Pataku the Bringer of Wealth, or Coming in of Wealth. In addition to minor spirits there are evil wandering spirits of wrongdoers called Ogbonoke. Topic. Practices. Topic. Dibia Dibia are the mystic mediators between the human world and the spirit world and act as healers, scribes, teachers, diviners and advisors of people in the community. They are usually consulted at the shrine of a community's major deity. Dibia is a compound of the words di professional, master, husband, plus ba grave doctoring, sciences. 
The Dibia are believed to be destined for spiritual work. The Dibia sees the spiritual world at any time and interprets what message is being sent and sees the spiritual problems of living people. They are given the power by the spirit world to identify any Elusi by name and the possible ways of placating and negotiating with the deity. Dibia are thought to be revealed to possess the power over one of three elements namely water and large bodies of water, fire and vegetation. Dibia whose elements of vegetation can go on to become herbalists by their supposed instinctual knowledge of the health benefits of certain plants they are instinctually drawn to, fire element Dibia can handle fire unscathed during their initiation, and water element Dibia do not drown. Dibia can partially enter the spirit world and communicate this by rubbing chalk on one half of their face. Dibia and Obia practices were transported to the British Caribbean during the slave trade and became known as Obia. Topic. AFA divination The name of divination in Igbo derives from Igbo orva or orha meaning to name coming from the diviner's skill in rooting out problems hence naming them. The Dibia or Ogba AFA, interpreter of AFA, is considered a master of esoteric knowledge and wisdom and Igbo AFA is a way in which people can find out the cause of such things as misfortunes. The diviner interprets codes from Ela Muo the Unseen by throwing divination seeds, cowries, and beads, or observing a divination board sometimes called Osho which can be used in pronouncing curses on the evil. In this way the diviner is endowed with special sight. It is related the sciences of homeopathic medicine known as GW, a practitioner consciously picks to either of these abilities. Animals that are special in divination and sacrifice include a white he-goat, a white ram, a tortoise and male wall gecko. These animals are prized for their rarity, price and therefore the journey taken to obtain. Chameleons and rats are used for more stronger medicines and deadly poisons, and antidotes can include lambs, small chickens, eggs, and oils. In zoo is used in rites from birth to death and is used to mark sacred buildings and spaces. AGWUNSI is the Igbo patron deity of health and divination and is related to insanity, confusion, and unusual human behavior which is linked to possession of AGWU by the diviner. AGWU can be manifested by other Elusi so that there could be images of a divination a Kenga or a Kenga AGWU for instance. Topic. Ancestral veneration Indabunze, or Indichi, are the deceased ancestors who are considered to be in the spirit world, Ayla MMU acute. In Odinani, it is believed that the dead ancestors are invisible members of the community. Their role in the community, in conjunction with Ayla, is to protect the community from epidemics and strife such as famine and smallpox. Ancestors help Chi look after men. Shrines for the ancestors in Igbo society were made in the central house, or Obi or Obu, of the patriarch of a housing compound. The patriarchal head of the household is in charge of venerating the patriarchal ancestors through libations and offerings, through this the living maintain contact with the dead. Only a patriarch whose father is dead, and therefore in the spirit world where they await reincarnation into the community, were able to venerate ancestors. Female ancestors were called upon by matriarchs. At the funeral of a man's father there is a hierarchy in Igbo culture of animals that will be killed and eaten in his honor. Usually this depended on the rarity and price of the animal, so a goat or a sheep were common and relatively cheaper, and therefore carried less prestige, while a cow is considered a great honor, and a horse the most exceptional. Horses cannot be given for women. Horses were more common among the northeastern Igbo due to Tetsi fly zone that Igboland is situated in and renders it an unsuitable climate for horses. Horse heads are traditionally decorated and kept in a reliquary and at shrines. A number of major masking institutions exist around Igboland that honor ancestors and reflect the spirit world in the land of the living. Young women, for example, are incarnated in the society through the Agbi GHMMU acute masking tradition in which mean represent ideal and benevolent spirits of maidens of the spirit world in the form of feminine masks. These masks are performed at festivals at agricultural cycles and at funerals of prominent individuals in the society. Topic. Kola nut Kola nut J, or J Igbo offerings and prayers GJ, Kola nut blessing, war J, Kola nut breaking can be performed personally between one and his spirit or in a group in a form of a prayer or chant. 
The Salua addresses the personal god or chi as well as Alusi and their ancestors. These kola nuts are held in a special round bowl called core with a compartment at the center of the bowl for condiments for the kola nut such as alligator pepper or capsicum cane, os j, and ground peanuts. The bowl and kola nut rite is used to welcome visitors into a household. After the prayer, the ceremony ends with the salua sharing pieces of the kola with the group, known as kj. The kola is supposed to cut by hand, but more recently knives have become acceptable. When the kola has three cotyledons, or parts, it is considered an jayakenga in some northern communities going by other names in communities a kenga doesn't operate and is considered a sign of great luck, bravery and nobility. O wetalu oji wetalu ndu, one who brings kola brings life, is a popular saying that points to the auspiciousness of the kola rite. Topic. Architecture Topic. Imbari Among a small area of the Urata Igbo cultural area, near Aweri, there is a tradition of building votive monument houses called Imbari primarily dedicated to the Orbara Ela specific to the community and sometimes other community deities. The name joins the word imbar nation, town, society, plus re eat in reference to the festival of life held after its completion. These votive shrines are typically designed with four columns and a central vault. Around the columns are modeled deities, spirits, and depictions of human life. The entire building built out of clay from termite mounds symbolically named G Yam by the initiated spirit workers called in DM Bay. NDIMGBE is secluded from the community for a couple of months during the rites of building the Imbari to a deity. Imbari are requested by a deity who the diviner tells the community feels neglected and cannot feel pride in the face of other deities in the spirit world. A string of unusual and unfortunate events befalling the community is linked to the aggrieved deity. An Imbari is commissioned and artists are chosen. After the completion of the Imbari the spirit workers are reincorporated into the community and a feast is held for the opening of the Imbari house where elders in the community come to exhibit the critique the expense of Imbari. The Imbari house is not a source of worship and is left to dilapidate, being reabsorbed by nature in symbolic sense related to Ayla. <laughs> Uto pyramids. Before the 20th century, circular stepped pyramids were built in reverence of Ayla at the town of Insude in northern Igboland. In total ten clay, mud pyramidal structures were still existing in 1935. The base section of a pyramid was 60 feet, in circumference and 3 feet, in height. The next stack was 45 feet, in circumference. Circular stacks continued, till it reached the top. The structures were temples for the god Ayla, Uto who was believed to live at the top. A stick was placed at the top to represent the god's residence. The structures were laid in groups of five parallel to each other. Because it was built of clay, mud like the defufa of Nubia, time has taken its toll requiring periodic reconstruction. See also Igbo culture Igbo Loa Notes <laughs>